Hold up. Oh no, hold up. I forgot what. Hold <laughs> <laughs> on. No. What up there? Hold up. That'll do. Sorry. <laughs> just, you know, Dan's so serious today. <laughs> just, he's got to get it out. I just can't. Hold up. With the Olympics hot on the heels of the Tour de France, it feels like the Vuelta is upon us quicker than ever before this year. For some riders, it's their last chance to get a big result in the season. For others, it's one of their final chances to prove their worth to the teams and get a contract for the next year. And for the rest of the riders, it's just a chance to shine on one of the biggest stages that world cycling has to offer. All of which makes it a race that you absolutely shouldn't miss. No, you shouldn't. Uh, 2016 marks the 71st edition of the race, which has held its late season slot now since 1995. It all kicks off in the town of Lorenzo with a team time trial, quite a long one at that. Uh, over the course of the next 21 stages, the riders have to deal with 3,315 kilometers. Uh, of those 21, seven are flat, although you need to take that with a pinch of salt when it comes to the world. So there are 12 stages which are either hilly or mountainous. We have one individual time trial and the aforementioned uh, team time trial, which kicks the whole thing off. It certainly does. And at 29.4 kilometers, there's bound to be some significant differences between the 22 teams taking part in this year's event, and therefore an early hierarchy amongst those riders wanting to win, of which this year there are quite a few. So let's take a look at the top GC contenders. The big favourite has to be Alberto Contador, who will be looking to salvage his season despite the fact that he's won two stage races and appeared on the podium at a further three. The reason he needs to salvage his season? Well, the Tour de France, which was a major objective for Contador, was a total disaster. He crashed on the opening day, again the next day, and ultimately pulled out on stage nine. If anybody can turn it around though, it has to be Alberto Consdor. You just can't keep that man down. Although one rider who will be looking to keep him down is Nairo Quintana. Uh, he too had a relatively disappointing Tour de France despite finishing on the third step of the podium. That was his worst result in the race. So both he and I think we were hoping for more from him in the high mountains. And incredibly, for support, he's going to have Alejandro Valverde, who's on his third straight Grand Tour of 2016. But I think Movistar are going to expect a lot from Quintana this year. They certainly will. But uh, Chris Froome is going to be riding the Vuelta for the fifth time in his career. And he's never finished lower than fourth place on general classification and we dearly love to do the double. And on top of that, Team Sky and Chris Froome see it as the best way to take form through to the off-season and beyond. But doing the double is a little bit more complicated this year when you factor in the Olympics and all the associated travel and stress that comes with that. But there's one thing for sure, Chris Froome will not be riding the Vuelta just to ride in the Gruppetta. He certainly won't. And it was at this race last year that Esteban Chavez really announced himself to the cycling world as a true Grand Tour contender with two stage wins in the opening week and an eventual fifth overall. Chavez then came blooming close to winning the Giro this year. He was so close, but he didn't quite do it. Although he will be the freshest of the GC favourites at the Vuelta this year, as his only race day since finishing the Giro has been the Olympics. Yeah, he could be a big favourite, that's for sure. Another rider that will be at the Vuelta is TJ Van Garden of BMC, who also had a disappointing Tour de France, although not as disappointing as Steven Kreisweig's Giro d'Italia. He had been head and shoulders above everyone else on the climbs, which is quite something given how big They're his shoulders good. are, until a crash just three days from the finish, or him ultimately finish just off the podium. So if he's got anywhere close to the same form he had back then, he's going to be a force to be reckoned with. Definitely, but we've also got another Colombian to conjure with, Miguel Angel Lopez of uh, Astana. Now he performed exceptionally well back in June when he won the Tour of Switzerland, and it was the first time that he's going to go into a Grand Tour as leader, given that Fabio Aru and Vincenzo Nibali aren't riding. Now another rider, Simon Yates, he'll be wanting to emulate the performance of his brother in the Tour de France. He comes back from suspension and will definitely be trying to do a good performance overall. And also young Hugh Carthy of Caja Rural, riding his first ever Grand Tour. And I think he'll be aiming to try and win one of the mountain stages. The sprinters, on the other hand, are looking a bit thin on the ground, which is really surprising when you consider that the World Championships are pan flat and tailor made for them. The Vuelta was always the number one preparation race for the world champs, although that seems to have changed in recent years. So that, coupled with the severity of this year's course, could be why 
Many of the major sprinters are leaving the race alone, but it does give an opportunity for some of the up-and-coming fast men. Yeah, it certainly does, and amongst those will be Nikias Arndt of Team Giant Alpecin. Now, he did win the last stage of the Giro d'Italia this year, although it was only after the relegation of Giacomo Nizzolo. Uh, another Italian will be Niccolò Bonifazio, who you might remember from the GCN show as being able to pull a very, very good stoppy, but he is very fast as well, so I wouldn't be surprised to see him take a stage win. Uh, Walter Whippet will be the representation from Team Cannondale Dragon back in the sprints at the race. One thing I was quite surprised about though is the absence here of Nasser Buani, the French sprinter from Coffee. It's partly because of course he missed out on the Tour de France through injury, through a fight in a hotel. Yeah. And also the fact that Coffee's his team bike sponsor is Orbea. I thought it'd be a definite starter here in Spain. So what about the route itself? Well, the first week is primarily in the northwest of Spain, just above Portugal. And after the opening team time trial, stage two is pretty flat besides from third category climb halfway through. But stage three, we already have a hilltop finish of the Mirador de Zaro. That's been used before in 2012 when Joaquim Rodriguez beat Alejandro Valverde and also Alberto Contador. So it should give us a pretty good indication of who's got good legs early on in the race. And if it doesn't, the next test is gonna come again on stage four, the very next day. Stage four finishes on an 11 kilometer, 5% climb to Mirador Viziet de Heberia. It's a climb that's never been used before in the race. And with two hilltop finishes in the first four days, the Spanish don't have much patience for riders suffering on hills, do they? No, they don't. There certainly are quite a few hard stages in that opening week. But despite that, the first stage, which is actually classified as mountainous, doesn't come until stage 10. That day, the riders will finish up Lagos de Covadonga, one of the most notorious climbs in Spain. Uh, that's been used 20 times since it was first introduced back in 1983. Now, despite the fact that it only peaks at 1,154 metres above sea level, it's 12.4 k's long, an average grade of 7% and midway up there's an 800 meter sector which averages 15% so it's certainly going to be a huge test. The most daunting and therefore arguably classified as the queen stage of the race comes a few days later on stage 14. 196 k's in length, 4,000 meters of climbing over three first category climbs and the final climb has been given especial category status and the stage is almost entirely held in France. And the finishing climb is none other than the Col de Bisque, which many of you, of course, will know. Yeah, that's a stage that certainly isn't to be sniffed at. The only individual time trial of the race comes on the final Friday, stage 19. It's 37 kilometers long and it's predominantly around Calpe, which many riders will know because plenty of teams hold their pre-season training camps there. Stage 20 is also not to be sniffed at. That has a climb to the Alto di Aitana, for the finish, which means that the final 21 kilometers of that stage are all uphill. After that, it's on to the now traditional procession stage with a sprint finish. Right, so we know the major riders racing, we know the major stage that they'll have to contend with, but one thing that we haven't told you is that these t-shirts are available on our shop. Shop.globalcycling.com. I do like these ones, do you? They do look good, yeah. For very a very limited S. time. There is a link down in the description and there will be one at the end of the video too. Do, yeah. we, get, do we get a deal on them? I think you've, you've got your deal, you're wearing it. All right. Yeah, all that leaves us to do then is give the kiss of death to one rider <sighs> each. It's time for the infamous GCN predictions. Hola amigos. I shall get started. The winner of the 2016 World Tour Espana will be. Miguel Angel Lopez. Matt? Well, I'm going to go down quite a predictable route, but I've got a feeling in my bones that the winner of the 2016 Vuelta Espana is going to be... I can guess this. Alberto Contador. I guess the Tinkoff from Spain. I'm going to keep things interesting and go for an outsider. My winner of the 2016 Vuelta at Espana is... Pierre... Lator. Oh my word. Uh, sorry, who are you going for? Hola! Sorry that I'm having to do this remotely, guys, but I am out in California, and yet it is really tough here. Anyway, my prediction I think it is going to be Esteban Chavez. Ooh, interesting prediction, sir. I wonder if he'll prediction. get it right. 
I think you'll get it wrong, and I think I'll get it right. Uh, now, Matt will be on the ground from just before the start of the world, which kicks off this coming Saturday, depending on when you're watching this. Uh, if there's anything in particular you would like to see in our videos coming out from Spain, then please let us know by leaving them in the comment section just down below. Yeah, and for Walter Content, we'll have a playlist that will be gradually filling up as the race progresses. Click down here. And if you'd like to see a Matt Stevens classic, including a clip-in fail, Click here to view Matt's pre to ride with Alberto Constable. Yeah, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. It's free, and all you've got to do is click on the globe. Tell your mates about it as well. Don't forget to like and share.